What's going on, guys? This is Bobby Douglas, and this is just the second half of the Seton Hall Butler game where we're taking a look at Miles Powell. Had a pretty shaky first half, but I think he does better in the second half in terms of scoring the basketball. So let's get right into it. And again, it's going to be number 13 in the blue. He's in the left corner right now, guarding number two. Again, number two for Butler is just a non shooter, so you'll see Powell sagging off him and playing a significant drop man to man coverage. And here we go, fighting her over that screen that time. Then he gets the switch onto number 10, and here he is. And again, right there, just kind of sitting in no man's land defensively. I know, understand he's anticipating that switch. But he just looks a little bit lost in terms of his overall defensive awareness right there. And again, I don't really see him as a positive defender. I think he's more of a, you know, he'll, he'll succeed in spite of his below average defense if he does stick in the NBA. So we got a foul here, so I'll skip ahead. So you can see Miles Powell had 10 points at half. Finishes with 29, so he should be a lot better in the second half. As I alluded to, here he is. So right there, not the best pass, but I overall like <clears throat> I overall like the vision there. Um, to find Romero Gill for the alley oop dunk. And you can see Seton Hall's extending their defense a little bit right here. Powell was guarding Kamar Baldwin. But that ended pretty abruptly. So you can see Seton Hall's in his zone. Powell's just switching. Now he's on Sean McDermott. And so right here, I don't know if it's part of that scheme for um, Powell to not rotate over to help on that shooter. But in theory, that's where the help should be coming from, not from the middle of the lane. Right there, Powell missed a tough floater. And again, his shot selection at times could be a little bit erratic. And that's definitely a contributor to his lower percentages. Good hustle right there, just getting his hands in. But again, you'd like to see him provide a little bit more resistance at the top of the key. Just let Kamar Baldwin drive right by him. he does here good shot fake again the threat of the three-point shot is there right there he gets called for a charge but i like the aggression that he showed and we'll see it again right here and yeah you know that's a tough call but i like the i like that he finished it through contact even though it was a charge and so again seton hall is just kind of in this extended zone defense and right here butler pretty much exposed that and here he is on Kamar Baldwin. Let's see if they get a screen. Yeah, not much he could really do right there. He probably played that well. Maybe he could have provided a little bit more resistance over the top, but he also needed to account for the roll man. And Baldwin just took advantage of that space Romero Gill was giving him, and he knocked down the mid-range jumper. Here he is coming off a double pin down into a three, and he's not going to get the three-point shot, but he did a good, nice job kind of initiating that contact. And we'll watch him shoot three free throws where I believe he was a close to 80% free throw shooter. So he can make those shots. Not worried about that in terms of his development in that regard. You see right there, hey, good job selling that call. Not, not really a whole lot of contact right there. Gonna knock that one down. Let's see if they'll get this one to go. Yep, knock that one down too. So again, overall a solid free throw shooter. And again, I think a solid shooter as well. It's just the difficulty of the shots that he did have to take were very, um, I think what did have a significant impact on his overall efficiency this year. But it is kind of troublesome that he took, basically played the same role last year, but he shot a worse percentage as a senior. So that is a little bit concerning. And that's going to be a charge. I will skip ahead here. Yeah. 
And Powell's going to come through. It looks like, nope, he's going to stay on that wing. And so right there, that probably could have been a kick out to Powell. It looks like we got out of bounds right here. And Powell's going to be out for a little bit right here, so I will skip ahead to when he comes back in. And here he is back in. And I believe he's in the rest of the game, so the next 15 and a half minutes, he will be in. Again, he only had, he was only out for about a minute right there. There's a nice alley you've dunk to Romero Gill. I will skip ahead this for this free throw, though. There we go. And again, so we really have yet to see Powell go off. So these next 15 and a half minutes are, yeah, around there. Should be pretty exciting considering he only has 13 points, I believe, and he finishes with 29. And here he is. Good job just kind of moving his head a little bit. Looked a little bit more engaged and active, bouncier defensively on that possession right there. Didn't really have a whole lot of impact on that play just because the ball didn't really go towards his side. But I do like that he does seem a little bit more refreshed after sitting out for about a minute or so. Here he is coming off a double pin down. Good job adjusting in the air. And let's see if he finishes his shot. Bang. Yep, that's the type of thing that Miles Powell will offer. You know, we talk about, I feel like the easy comparison just because they're in the same conference as Marcus Howard and Miles Powell. Not because they play super similarly, but just because they're both undersized primary scoring guards. And the thing with that really separates Powell from Howard is that I think Powell is way is more comfortable shooting. Um, he's more comfortable shooting off of screens while while um, Marcus Howard is a lot better off the dribble. I think Marcus Howard is a better prospect than Miles Powell. And just because I think Howard can do a little bit more off the dribble and create his own offense. Whereas I think Powell really benefits with the use of a screen, things like that, coming off the ball, catch and shoot. And so that's something that I do look for uh, in Powell's game. Let's see what he does here, coming through that elevator screen. Again, another really nice read, and Roden's going to miss that three. But again, really nice job just kind of analyzing where the defense was coming from, and he ultimately made a nice hook pass over to that wing for an open three, just couldn't really connect. And I believe that's, yeah, Rick Smith's kid. He just made that basket for Butler. Got a timeout right here, so I will skip ahead. And here we go. So again, Powell's lifting up. And again, they just keep feeding Romero Gill for these alley-oop dunks. I think that's his third already this half. And yeah, he's just a monster. He was the defensive uh, player of the year in the Big East, by the way, too, Romero Gill. And he's a very good shot blocker and just an intimidating force at the rim. And here's Seton Hall again. You can see extending their defense. Looks like they're in a straight man right now. And you can see Powell switch on to Sean McDermott right now. And so right there, what Powell just did, that can't really happen, I don't think. Um, you saw it, where he kind of just let Sean McDermott go back door on him as the plays are developing, and we saw Butler drive. And McDermott kind of just like went right by Miles Powell. Powell didn't really have any awareness of what was going on, it seemed. But luckily, no harm, no foul because it's Seton Hall ball. Here he's coming off a dribble handoff. Another really nice pass. Again, Powell's scoring gravity in college really helped him make those types of passes a lot. And again, the second the defense collapses, he usually knows to just kind of kick it to the open player, which I do like about his game. Although he was primarily a scorer at Seton Hall. But, you know, I do like that he shows basic read um, ability off of drives not really sure he's a guy that you would want kind of running the offense I think he's way better off the ball I think I mentioned that earlier but I do think he can make um, some solid decisions as a secondary initiator looks like we got a foul and one here so I will skip ahead and there's a free throw
So again, you can see Powell one pass away. He's kind of standing up, not really super engaged defensively. Here he is. Good job switching and just making that pretty seamless, though. And right there, that's a really nice finish by Kamar Baldwin, actually. But you can see Powell just kind of turning his head around, not really aware, not really sure where to stand or where to face. And ultimately, like, it wasn't his fault that that basket was scored in any way, but just those types of things off the ball. Powell's going to miss that one. But again, I think he looks a lot more comfortable coming off of those types of uh, pin downs and flares than he does just kind of creating for himself off the dribble. I think he was a pretty capable off the dribble shooter. But, you know, I do think his wheelhouse is more coming off of screens and just being able to set his feet properly and then elevate really well. And that's one thing he does extremely well is, you know, the lift on his jump shot is really spectacular, I think. And that's something he needs because I think his release point is a little bit low. And so just having that extra lift from the base really helps him just get that shot off. Here he is kind of dribbling into a double team. Nice, smart play to just kind of kick it out and reset the offense. And it's going to be a miss. And that's Jordan Tucker. We got a foul here. Seton Hall's in the bonus already, which is not bode well. But um, Butler is not, so you don't get free throws. And there's Jordan Tucker missing that shot. Here comes Powell. Let's see what he does here. There again, good job. Just kind of a little bit herky, a little bit of some herky jerky movement. Again, another nice feed into Gill, who's having like a tremendous game, just impacting the ball offensively. If you got some free throws here, I'll skip these. We get a high ball screen with Butler. Powell, good job just kind of sticking with his man. He's going to get that rebound, and here he comes on the offensive end. As we approach 10 minutes left in the second half, and he's going to pull up for three, and he's going to almost make that one. And again, th those are the types of shots where obviously he's not going to be taking those in the NBA, but even at Seton Hall, just why even pull up from that range with 24 seconds left on that shot clock? Just seems a little bit, um, just a little bit forced to me. And again, those types of shots are the ones that really kind of drive down his overall efficiency numbers. And you can see Gill with another huge block and more free throws for him right here. And there's Powell, and yeah, that's a pretty deep shot for his man to take. We got foul on someone for Seton Hall, so I'll skip ahead here. And here we go. Good job from Powell. That's just simple anticipation. He's going to finish with a nice lay-in. And again, I don't know what... I think Jordan Tucker passed that ball. I don't know what he was thinking right there. He basically gave it to Powell um, as if he were on his team right there. Uh, that was just, you know, good anticipation from Powell because he was literally right there before the pass was even made, which is interesting that Jordan Tucker decided to still pass that. Hopefully we see a replay right here. It doesn't look like, uh, yeah, here we go. So again, Powell is just, he just did a really nice job just jumping that passing lane, knew immediately where that ball was going to go. But it did help that Jordan Tucker literally just gave him the ball. <laughs> she got something going on here, so let's get right. So Powell kind of being used as that cutter def defender right there in the middle of the lane on an inbound. And so right there, again, a little bit late to react to the ball movement. And he just kind of tripped and fell right there. And there's Kamara Baldwin. He's going to miss that three. We're going to get a foul here. And now we got free throws the rest of the way, which just blows with nine minutes left. Thank God we're not watching this live. Here's Powell coming up to DHO. New ball screen again. A little bit herky. Pretty herky jerky in his dribble movement. Kind of just out of control a little bit. And there's Gill just finishing with that nice little hook again.
looks like we got an offensive foul here. And Laval Jordan just cannot believe that was called. And here we go. So Powell's going to come up from the bottom. He's going to shoot that three. He's going to knock that one down. Big time shot for Powell right there. And again, that's the type of electric scoring ability that he does have. Um, just a microwave ability as well. Just being able to come up from the block and just quick turn of his hips set his feet and fires away and knocks that three down with a whole lot of confidence. So right there, did a decent job kind of staying with his man through the cut, or through the screen, I should say. But again, doesn't really have a great sense of lateral quickness, I would say. Um, it's a little bit slow, which I do think will obviously hinder his ability defensively. And that's just a terrific shot as we skip this media timeout. We got free throws here too, so skip these. Here's Powell coming up. Ball screen right there again. Probably I think he probably anticipated that pass a little bit too much. And that's what I mean. He's good at basic reads. But when the situation requires a more advanced read, a more nuanced read, I'm not really sure if he can deliver. As we saw right there, he kind of was just expecting that play to be open. And Butler did a nice job kind of shutting it down on that roll. And he just ended up throwing it to no man's land. I don't think it really – I guess it would, ended up in a turnover, but – uh, yeah. So you got a kickball right here. And there's McDermott on the miss. Good contest from Powell. And here's Powell sprinting down the floor. Let's see if he finishes this. Really nice play from Powell. I mean, really getting his ass back and just contesting that three-point shot from McDermott and then immediately sprinting, filling the lane well, gets the pass from his teammate, and he finishes that one off. So here's Powell on, I believe that's Sean McDermott. Good switch. Oof. You got Butler ball with two seconds left on the shot clock, so I doubt anything's going to happen here. And yeah, and there's a nice shot just filling the lane from Powell. Good pass from Quincy McKnight, too. Yeah, so here's Butler with two seconds left on the shot clock. I don't think they can get anything off here. Yeah. Again, really nice shot from Powell, just kind of using that shooting threat to, to get his man up in the air and then immediately draw the contact. And he'll be going to the line to shoot for three free throws again. We saw that once earlier, even though that time, he, the first one he kind of flopped, but this one I think was a pretty, pretty legit foul. We got a timeout here. And here we go. It didn't really show it. The camera didn't really do a good job showing that overall free throw right there. But there you go. Let's see if this one's better. No. Still not good. <laughs> Why do they switch? camera angles mid-release. There we go. Again, you can see it's a little bit low, but um, again, 80% free throw shooter, so. Good job calling out that back screen for Powell. Good job calling out that switch right there, too. Let's see. Baldwin just managed to save that. Down to 5, 4, 3, 2. Yep, that's a good, really good defensive possession from Seton Hall. Good communication overall. Powell being a key contributor to that. And a nice shot contest from Gill uh, to end it. 
was a miss. They pick out what you've seen. Oh, it's this. They will not. We got a foul on the ground here. Which should result in free throws, so I'll skip these. So Powell's guarding number four here. And he's pretty much on the weak side off the ball. That could have been a foul. Looks like we're going to get a flopping. Wow. Okay. We're going to get a flopping penalty. I don't know what the... I think they've already... Yeah, nothing much going on here, so I'll just skip this. And yeah, there's a bucket. Powell wasn't really involved on that defensive possession anyway. And here we go. Again, coming off one of those pinned down screens off of the block. And Powell just trying to get some open look. Good job making that pass to Roden. Let's see what he does with it. And again, those are the types of basic reasons. I do think he can make that cross-court pass. And right there, he misses that floater. But that cross-court pass off the dribble, I think, is a pretty solid thing to have in your bag. And so I, I do like that Powell has shown a willingness to at least pass the ball a little bit. You know, a lot of these ultra-minded, ultra, like these one-trick one pony scorers tend to not really have great passing ability or feel or even a willingness to pass. I think Powell, that's not really the case with him. I do think he's a very willing passer, and I do think that definitely does bode well for his NBA chances, assuming there are any. So we got free throws here, so I'll skip these. So we're going to get a, oh, that's tough, offensive rebound for Butler. And here you go. Here's Jordan Tucker. Powell off the ball. Good job staying alert defensively right there. Did nice job moving his feet, keeping his head on a swivel, and kind of just giving help to that drive. And right there, we're going to get a foul, almost an and one. But I'll skip these free throws. And so, again, you can see Powell off the ball. And again, Quincy McKnight was mainly the primary point guard for Seton Hall, they'd like to run Powell off of these types of screens, especially late in games. And that's a really deep three, and he's going to miss that one. And again, those are the types of shots where you just, you kind of just shake your head a little bit. Right there, a little bit loose with the ball. And a turnover. Good steal by Kamar Baldwin right there, too. And a nice pass. Let's see if they finish it. And one, it'll be immediate timeout. And here we go. So again, Powell off the ball, coming off of that double pin down. As We've seen this so many times throughout the games, and he's going to get a high ball screen. Again, really nice job just recognizing that that second defender is chasing him around. An immediate pass back to Roden, who has a wide open lane towards the basket. He ultimately ends up getting to the lane and drawing a foul. So, I mean, just the passing ability is there with Powell, I will say. I mean, like, I've been impressed uh, with his passing thus far, especially in the second half. First half, he looked a little bit shaky. But this second half, he's been pretty legit. And Baldwin's going to lose that ball out of bounds. So he got another turnover. And here's Powell. Missed that screen. Immediate flare out. And that's a really good rhythm three from Powell. That's exactly what you like to see him do. Again, that time it was a little bit inverted. He set the screen, immediately pops out, gets his feet set, one, two, up, and bang. Really nice, just in rhythm, overall shot from Powell. And again, that's where I think he's at his best. Not really creating his own shot, but really just coming off of screens and getting those open looks. Right there, a little bit miscommunication on the switch, but they managed to get it sorted out before any real damage was done. Again, you can see Powell kind of just losing his man back door a little bit. Granted, it's a pretty congested lane, so not really anything's going to come out of that, but it's just a matter of just overall awareness.
So let's see what Powell does here. He might already have 29 now that I think about it. So he might be done scoring. Let's see what he does. Yeah, he wanted that shot. Couldn't really get it. Let's see if he makes this. Yeah, it's, again, another tough shot. That was late in the shot clock. But, again, so many of his shots were of that variety. So you can't really blame the whole – you can't really pin the whole inefficiency argument just on, you know, him being a bad shooter. I think he's a pretty solid shooter when he gets his feet set and he's on balance. But he just has to take so many of those late in the shot clock, those tough step back threes that just aren't really high percentage as they – as just fundamentally they aren't. So – here we go. We got a timeout right here. Final two minutes of action. Remember, Seton Hall does win this game, so I'm excited to see how this one ends. That's the thing, too. I've, I've rewatched so many college basketball games just because right there, that just, oh, that can't happen. They got lucky. I don't know. I think Roden blocked that or something, but, yeah, that that's shaky. And Powell's just yelling at his guy to get across. Here we go. Final minute, 45. Here he's going to get the ball. And yeah, Baldwin did a really nice job defending him right there. Powell had to take another tough shot. And again, just those shots that he takes, I mean, those aren't going to be made a whole lot by anybody. And I don't think Powell's really the exception to that. But again, late in the shot clock, he kind of has to force that up. And so here we go. Final minute 25 of this game. And Powell's on Sean McDermott. Right there, I don't know what happened. Good no call by the officials. And now, so you, now you can see Baldwin's on Powell. And Baldwin, I actually do like as a defender. It's pretty active. There we go. So Butler's up two. Or Butler's down two. Powell's going to drive. And I think Kamar Baldwin blocked that shot. So, again, he's a guy who I will have in my top 100 as well once I finalize my big board. Which should be in the coming weeks, I would say. But you just saw just the overall wingspan right there that he did show. The range was pretty impressive in blocking that shot from Miles Powell. Here we go, we got Seton Hall inbounding it. Powell's going to come off that screen, let's see if he shoots it. Yeah, again, had the right read, just didn't really get it above that defender. I think that was McDermott. So we got two seconds on the shot clock right here. So I'll be shocked if Seton Hall gets a good shot out of this. They got a really good look. And they bear, wow, they got an awesome look out of that. Good job on Jared Roden, too, knocking down that three. What a play design from Willard. Great stuff right there. That's going to be a true block. Ooh, that could have been a charge travel. You name it, that could have been it. Let's get these free throws. Ball makes a first, and looks like he's going to make the second. So we got a timeout here, so I'll skip ahead. And here we go. So here's the press break for Seton Hall. They're going to get it in. They should foul McKnight. Yeah, and then I'll skip these free throws. So the rest of it is basically just a cat and mouse game in terms of Butler fouling and then Seton Hall going to the line. Let's see if Baldwin's going to pull up for threes. Will misses that. And Seton Hall's going to grab the rebound. It's going to be another foul. And then this is just the end of the game right here. More free throws ahead. Skip this. So we got a six-point lead with 22 seconds left. And here's Baldwin. You can see Powell, I believe, is in the corner guarding McDermott, which I think is an interesting matchup for him to have. Right there, they just switch on the perimeter. McDermott misses that. And are they going to foul? No, doesn't look like it. And Jerry Rose is going to finish it with an exclamation point. And that should be it. As these final seconds tick off the clock. Yeah, nothing going on here. And McDermott's going to miss that. So there we go. I'll end the video here. Thank you guys for watching this one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think Powell had a lot better of a second half just in terms of his overall offense, offensive attack. 
So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we will see you for the next video. Have fun watching the draft lottery tonight. I know I'll be extremely tuned into that. So, yeah, with that said, we will see you in the next video. Thanks.